So we're going to talk about two topics today. We're going to talk about a new kind of graph, uh, and we'll do that first. And so the new kind of graph for today is something called a, and hold your breath, it's called a relative, why is my pen so fat, relative cumulative frequency graph. Whew. Let me change my pen here. Uh, okay. Thinner and black. Okay, good. Now that's a mouthful. It turns out the kind of short name for that is an ogive. And so a ogive and a relative cumulative frequency graph are in fact the exact same thing. I'm going to go through the steps on how to make one, but I want to just give you the data we're going to use first. It's the same data as last time, which is the a bunch of tomato plants. You have 10 tomato plants, and you count the number of tomatoes on each plant. And so the tomatoes go 15, 23, 18. Obviously, it's 15 tomatoes on one plant. 30. 17, 29, 29, 33, 14, 25. So we're going to make an ogive using this data on the next page. And it's a little bit complicated, so I'm going to go through the steps in some detail. So the first thing you would do is you would uh, think about just how, this, how a histogram might look like, because right? it's kind of based on this. And so on the bottom you would have number of tomatoes, Tom being very different tomatoes. So we'll go 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Over here we have the term frequency, which remembers a fancy name for a number of plants. And we'll just go dun, 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 dun. Okay, good. So think about that data. There was, uh, this is one. There was that one, 14 one. There was three in here. I think there was one in here. It wasn't there yet. One there, three here, and then there was two here. So if I were to make a kind of a little chart for this, let me do that up here, we would have, um, I'm going to say number, let's go up here, number of tomatoes. And so by that, what I really mean here is I mean 15, I mean the 10 to 15 category. And I'll go 20, uh, 25, 30, 35. So notice that these numbers are like the right-hand side of each bar. This 15 category, I mean this in mind here. So then let's do, when we do frequency here, we've got one, just the height of the bars, three, one, three, two. Okay, so this means there's one less than 15. There's three between 15 and 20. I'm going to add a new column now, though, which is something called cumulative frequency. And I think most of you know the word cumulative, it just means the total, right? In what's the cumulative number of books you've read is all the books you've ever read. So now that these numbers become a little bit different uh, because it's, there's, how many are less than 15? One of them. But how many are less than 20? Well, it's 1 plus 3 gets us 4. In cumulative, the number 20, less than 20 are 4 of them. So basically, where does 4 come from? It comes from just 1 plus 3. So what number goes here? Well, 5, and then 8, and then 10. And the last number always will be the number of total plants. Okay? So if you think about now, you want to make a cumulative frequency histogram. This right here stays what it is. Okay? But then you would basically take this bar and put it on top of this bar. And then you would take the whole thing here and put it on top of this one. So let me kind of go to the next page and show you what that might look like. So remember our numbers are 1, 4, 8, 10, 1, 4, 5, 8, 10. So here we go. We're going to make now, so again, same categories on the bottom, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Over here, I'm going to put 10 at the very top, okay? So it was 1, put 5 right in the middle, 4, 5, 8, and then 10. Now this is number of tomatoes. Now this bar is actually not quite yet an ogive. For an ogive, what you do is you kind of think about that first, and then I'll do it in purple. You draw like a smooth line on top of the... So that purple line actually is an ogive, okay? And the one last little wrinkle is what goes on your uh, 
y-axis. Before, I've said that the y-axis is frequency, and by frequency we just mean number of plants. But you don't do that for an ogive. For an ogive, it's always in terms of what we call relative frequency. And that just means percent. Relative frequency means percent. So this 10 would be 100%. 100% of all the plants are less than 35. This 5 would be 50%. Okay? Because an ogive is a relative, cumulative, that the bars go up and down, frequency plot. All right? So let's actually just, I'll make one up, but let's kind of take a look at what, one on the next page. So y-axis must be percent. Uh, x-axis must be number of things. So let's just, hypothetically, let's do an ogive for the GPAs of seniors. So you draw this. Okay, biggest GPA, we'll say, you can get above a 4.0. Let's put 4.5 there. I don't know, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5. I hope I did this right. 3.0, and not bad, 3.5, 4.0. So this is GPA. Always label your axes. For a new ogive, it's got to be relative frequency, which means percent. So I'll put 100% up here, 50% there, and this would be 25. So it might, I don't know, I'll just kind of make this up. But it might kind of look something like a bunch of people have a GPA in here. Okay, and then something like that. I don't know, something like that. Okay. Now, what does this tell you? Let's kind of think about how you might use an ogive. All right. Well, if I asked you what's the, if you're in the 90th percentile, I think you know what that means. What's your GPA? Well, 90th percentile is about here. So if you go across, can you see that dashed line? Oh, it looks like you're about a 4.0. Okay. If I said, hey, your GPA is a 2.5, what percent of people have a GPA better than you? Well, if you kind of go up here and then go across, you'll see about 40% of people have a GPA less than 2.5, which would mean 60% of people have a GPA above 2.5. Right? If I said, uh, you know, if you are have a GPA of 3.5, what percentile are you? Well, if you go up, Looks like, yeah, I don't know, you're about the 75th percentile. And obviously, if I had kind of graph it, this would make more sense. All right, does that kind of make sense? Actually, I'm a little bit misleading here. It should always start at zero. So it really should have kind of looked like that instead. Okay? Because um, no, no one has a GPA less than 1.5. I hope not. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be here. Okay, so that's what an OJI looks like. And we'll get a lot of practice kind of with that. And notice the last thing on an OJI would have to always be 100% because everybody is there. All right? Well, we've been doing the last couple, kind of shifting gears quite a bit, we've been doing the last couple lessons is the idea of describing distributions. Big new topic right now. Describing distributions using graphs. Okay, We've seen lots of different graphs. Right? Box plots, stem plots, ogive, histogram, all these different things. And remember the word distribution, let's remember what that means. The word distribution means it's kind of a fancy word for what values a variable takes and how often it takes them. Beginning a big new topic right now, we're basically going to think about other ways to describe a distribution. So now we're not going to describe a distribution anymore using a graph. We're going to describe it using words. Which I hope you realize if I say, what's the distribution of the GPAs to the senior class? You wouldn't say three, right? It takes some words to actually convey the information about what the complete picture of the GPAs of the senior class is. Describe a distribution using words. So describing a distribution, you have to kind of hit three categories. And those three categories are shape, center, and spread. So these three things you use to describe any distribution. What's the distribution of the GPA to the senior class? You've got to talk about those three things. What's the distribution of the average home price in Redwood City? You've got to talk about those things. What's the distribution of you know, the money in U.S. circulation? Talk about those things. 
So I'm going to go through these things in some little, uh, some detail on the next page, kind of one at a time. Let's talk about shape first. So shape, I want to just give you some vocabulary to talk about shape. And there's a couple, bunch of different vocabulary words. The first vocabulary word is the idea unimodal or bimodal or I suppose trimodal. Usually you don't go beyond it, you talk about kind of multimodal. Um, so for example, just imagine like the senior GPAs, and now I'm going to do like a histogram of it, right? So not necessarily, um, it's not an OGI, but maybe something like this, okay? If that was the GPAs of the senior class, so this would be like, you know, the, your 2.0s and then your 4.0s over here, you would say this is unimodal. The uni meaning how many peaks are there, right? There's one peak. If the GPAs look something like this, And that would be bimodal because there's kind of two big peaks. Okay, and obviously trimodal would have three peaks. Right? Um, if it's none of these things, you can imagine a GPA. It's, what if it kind of looks something like this, where basically there was an equal. No, there's not actually no peaks. That's called uniform. So that's one way to describe the shape is the number of peaks it has. Okay, unimodal, bimodal, trimodal, or uniform would be like no peaks. Furthermore, on shape, a little more on shape, you can kind of talk about a little more about the shape, because what if it looked like this? What if there were far more 4.0s, or high grades, than there were lower grades? See so, yeah, how the peak is kind of uh, over here? We would say that this is skewed left. And the skewness has to do with where is the tail. You notice the tail here is to the left, which is why it's skewed left. Similarly, skewed right, and there's a picture, by the way, there's a poster of this up in my room. The tail would be to the right. Let me kind of just draw it like this. I hope you kind of get the picture here. It might look something, I haven't really drawn all the bars, but you kind of get a sense the bars might look something like this. Very often, we just kind of do shorthand like that, okay? So that would be skewed right, okay? If it's neither, if it's not skewed, so what if it's skewed not right or left, so maybe it looks something like this. not really skewed in any way, we would call this symmetric. Okay, so that's a little bit on shape. Remember, we're describing the distribution. We've got shape, center, and spread. I just gave you a bunch of vocabulary words having to do with shape. All the modals, all the skewed, symmetric, uniform can use to describe the shape as, it, as appropriate. Uh, now let's get on to center. Center, we're going to talk about this in a lot more detail later on, but let's say for GPAs it looks something like this. Kind of making this up. Okay, roughly where would the center be? Oh, it's about 3.5, let's say. We'll talk a lot more about median and mode and other things in a little bit later, but for right now, center, just think roughly where is the middle. Okay? And then spread, we describe using like from blank to blank. So I think what's the lowest GPA? I don't know, maybe 1.9. What's the highest GPA? Maybe 4.2. That would be the spread. Okay? So let's just kind of do a quick example of uh, what if I asked you to describe the heights of the freshman boys. Describe the, sorry, I take that back. Let me erase this. I actually made a mistake when I wrote. I meant to say describe the distribution, keyword there, I forgot. Distribution of heights of freshman boys. Well, again, we got to hit three categories. Okay, those categories are shape, center, and spread. So shape, my hunch is it's probably more or less uh, unimodal. There's probably a lot of boys that are around, you know, I don't know, five foot six, just kind of thing, five foot seven. Okay, it's probably more or less symmetric, wouldn't you think? There's probably as many kind of really tall people as there are many short people. I, again, I'm not without doing a thorough analysis. Um, what is the center? I don't know, probably about five foot six. I'm just guessing. I don't really know. Maybe freshman boys are shorter or taller than that. Spread. Well, I would say it's maybe from. I don't know. The shortest boy might be like four foot eleven to. I don't know. Maybe there's a kid that's six foot two. We hope so for the basketball team. Okay? So no matter what the distribution is, you have to hit these th three things. Okay? Shape, center, 
and spread. And think of you could do that for anything, you know, incomes of average, you know, household income in Atherton, you know, number of, uh, you know, number of fleas on a bunch of cats. You can kind of just about for anything, right? Shape, center, spread describes the distribution.